Are you tired of trying to collimate your SAT? Do you have no more hairs left for you to pull? Well, fear not, my friend. I have the solution for you. My name is Ali Labaidli, and welcome to Astra Pharma. Exhibit one, MetaGuide. It's a software that can help you achieve precise collimation for your reflector telescopes, and particularly your Schmidt Cassegrains. It leverages a webcam or a ZWO camera, for example, to provide real-time feedback on your collimation, making it easier to achieve high accuracy and reducing some of that guesswork from the process. It also utilizes real-time stacking and averaging to give you a cleaner, crisper image for collimation and also to tame some of the seeing issues that you might face as much as possible. Better seeing conditions are of course preferable, but it's no deal breaker if your seeing is as bad as mine. I'm going to show you two processes, an easy method and a harder method. The easy method will just utilize the same imaging train that you already have on your telescope with a red filter. The harder process will utilize higher magnification and it has a few additional steps. I personally think that the easy method is quite enough for you to achieve real good collimation, but if you want to have the best results possible, then you'd want to employ the hard method. Before I take you upstairs with me to the roof to show you the process, I'd like you to do three things for me. I'd like you to download MetaGuide from the link in the description to download the ZWO Direct Show Drivers, and finally to download Microsoft Visual C++. All links will be provided in the description. Once you've downloaded and installed them all, it's business as usual, of course. Set up your telescope, polar align, and then we're gonna start our collimation. See you upstairs. So here we are on the roof of the house. I just finished setting up my telescope. I did a rough polar alignment, and I'm gonna show you the easy method. The first thing that you wanna do is, you wanna change to the red filter, if you have one. And then you want to run your auto focusing routine. You want to have the best focus that you possibly can for this to work. And there we go, the focusing routine finished. The next step would be to point your telescope at a bright star. I can see Arcturus right above me, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to open up Stellarium. Then I'm simply going to search for the star Arcturus, click on it. And then I'm going to go back to Nina. Click on the framing wizard. I'm going to load the coordinates from my planetarium up, which is Stellarium. And then I'm going to simply press blue and center. And there we are, centered the star in the middle of the frame. I'm simply going to close this off and then I'm going to disconnect the camera. And then you want to open MetaGuide. So I'll go here and search for MetaGuide and open the app. You want to select your camera, the ZWO 2600mm in my case. I'm going to click OK. And as soon as you open the application, it's going to show you the star that you pointed at. You want to go to video props. You want to make sure that you're at around one millisecond. And you want to go to ROI mode and make sure that you have high speed mode checked. And you want to click OK. And then you want to go to setup. Here you want to set up your focal length. First you want to set your aperture. So I'm going to input 234 for my Edge HD 9 and a quarter inch. And my calibrated F ratio is 7. And then I'm going to go to extra. Because I'm using the red filter, I'm going to set my wavelength at around 650 nanometers. And then I'm going to click OK. Let me just check. Yep, so it calculated my focal length at 1,638. I'm going to click OK. So as you can see here, the red dot is moving constantly to the right of the star. That means that there's coma to the right of the star. This means that the telescope needs collimation and that the collimation is off and there's a bias towards the right. So what you want to do is make micro adjustments to your screws slowly and see the response of the coma, mainly the red dot. And you want to have it right above where the star is instead of have it constantly at one direction or at one side of it. But before I do that, I'm actually gonna increase the brightness. I'm gonna set it to two milliseconds and I'm gonna click okay. As you can see, that gave me a better indication of the coma. So now I'm just gonna fiddle with the screws until I get it right. So as you can see, I just tightened one screw and it made it worse. So I'm gonna start loosening that same screw now. That made it quite a bit better actually. So I'm gonna keep on loosening that same screw. I'm 
going to give it time to settle and I'm going to make more adjustments. I'm going to actually increase the stack time just to slow down the movement of the red dot. I'm going to put it to three. Yep, there's clearly bias towards the top of the star. So I'm going to try and fix that, make some adjustments. So as you can see, I just tightened one of the screws and the response was pretty good. The star is now more stable towards the middle, still needs to go down. So that might actually be the best I can get it. To be honest with you, this is, I would be happy with this result. So now you can simply close MetaGuide, reconnect your camera and go about your imaging session. But if you want a more precise collimation or if you want to collimate the hard method, you want to reconnect your camera first and then go to your framing wizard and recenter the star, just like so. So what you want to do now is remove your entire imaging train, install a Barlow lens, use a planetary camera with an IR pass filter. I have the ZWO 850 nanometer IR pass filter and I'm going to show you exactly what I do. So what I would do now is release my equipment. Thankfully, I have a quick release adapter right here. and I would set them aside. And then I would use a Barlow lens. I have a 3X Barlow right here, a planetary camera with an IR filter. I have the ZWO 850 nanometer IR pass filter. And then I would connect my planetary camera to sharp cap to focus. It is 47 degrees Celsius here in Kuwait and I'm sweating bullets. So I would greatly appreciate if you like, comment, subscribe. Let's continue. So with that done, you wanna open up Sharpcap, select your planetary camera, click on live view. Let me just adjust my gain here. And you should find the star pretty easily because we've centered it. I'm just gonna play with the focus until I find the star. It should expand when it's defocused. There it is, you see it? That's the star right there. So I'm gonna go back on my mount controls, center it, just like that. Try and focus it as best I can. There we go. And then I would use a simple button of mask for fine focusing. I should have one somewhere in the midst of this. I actually nailed the focus first time. I'm a professional. And then go and remove your button of mask. And disconnect the camera from sharp cap. And then you want to reopen MetaGuide. Select your camera. Click OK. And you want to go to vid video props. Actually, before you do that, you want to go on setup. Let me edit my aperture again, 234. And I'm actually gonna put my prime focal length at F30 because I'm using an X3 Barlow. And I'm gonna go on extra and I'm gonna input my band pass at 850 nanometers. And I'm gonna click okay. So let me go and set up once more. As you can see here, it calculated my calibrated F ratio at 21, and it calculated my focal length at 4,914, which is about right. And I'm gonna click okay. Now I'm gonna click on video prop, and I'm gonna go on ROI, select high speed, go on power settings. You wanna get it to the point where it's stable. So that looks about right to me. And I'm gonna increase the stacking to about maybe five seconds. That should calm things down, as you can see. And now you can make the finer adjustments. I can already see the ring right here, which indicates that I'm very close to optimal collimation. So then you'll simply want to repeat that same process, adjust your screws until you get that point right on top of the star, or not biased towards one side rather than the other, and you would be collimated.
and there we go i think this is good enough for now as you can see the red dot is moving a lot but it's not biased towards one side rather than the other i can see the ring clearly it's pretty uniform i'm simply gonna wait for it to settle some more and then i'm gonna save this image and let's just check it out the documents credit guide let's check the last image as you can see we can clearly see the pattern around the stars we can clearly see the uniform ring and we're pretty collimated right now i would be happy with this i think i would have great results deep sky imaging and now i'm going to simply remove my planetary camera reattach my deep sky astro camera refocus my telescope making sure that i move the focuser counterclockwise that would be the last movement i make and i'm going to lock the camera i mean lock the mirror sorry and then i would simply start my imaging session or take my telescope somewhere better than this and capture sharp detailed images of the night sky so that was the metaguide collimation process the way i approach it take what you will from my video and adapt that process to your liking i've actually achieved some better results since i've recorded that video i'm going to show them here don't forget to like comment and subscribe drop a thank you to frank who's the creator of this tool he's been very helpful to me and others in the community this has been astro pharma and thank you for watching